Britain's Conservative Party has chosen their leader, Liz Truss, to take the reins as the country's next prime minister, just the third woman ever to hold that position. Once Truss is officially appointed by the Queen tomorrow, she will inherit a host of extraordinary challenges facing the UK, from historic inflation to sky-high energy prices. She addressed those challenges just a few hours ago. I will deliver a bold plan to cut taxes and grow our economy. I will deliver on the energy crisis, dealing with people's energy bills, but also dealing with the long-term issues we have on energy supply. Keir Simmons is NBC senior international correspondent in London, outside number 10. Uh, Keir, and interestingly, she will not be presenting her credentials to the Queen at Buckingham Palace, as his traditional. She'll be flying a thousand miles to Balmoral in Scotland because the Queen is indisposed. She's, you know, uh, let's just say retreated because of so-called mobility issues at age 96. So that's unusual. In, in all of this, it's unusual, isn't it? It is, Andrew. That's unprecedented in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. She would normally be half a mile around the corner at Buckingham Palace. Instead, she's 500 miles away at Balmoral. But so many uh, things have not been seen for decades uh, here in the UK. Liz Truss comes in facing this cost of living crisis. The war in Ukraine, she has been adamant that she will 100 100% support Ukraine. Another example of the challenges she faces, trying to improve relations relations between Downing Street and the Biden administration. And, you know, Andrea I had the opportunity to talk to the man who will likely be the next foreign secretary, James Cleverly, today, and asked him about how they're going to shift relations with the U.S., that important partner. Liz is an internationalist. She's been foreign secretary. She knows how important our international relationships are, and she knows how important our relationship with freedom-loving countries like the United States of America is, and I have no doubt that that relationship will continue going for seven Is there work to be done to improve relations with the Biden administration? Well, it's always in our mutual interest for the UK and the US to uh, have a strong working relationship. But Liz understands that, and I have no doubt she'll be working towards that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just another uh, issue, uh, as an example, Andrea, the energy prices here in Europe. It looks like governments are going to have to spend billions of dollars to defend their businesses, businesses like pubs up and down the UK that are warning many of them may have to close in the winter because they simply don't have the money just to heat their premises. Keir Simmons, thank you so much, in front of number 10. And I want to bring in Gillian Tett from London, chair of the editorial board and editor-at-large for the Financial Times. Gillian, I want to read a little bit from the Associated Press so people can get an idea of the challenges facing the UK right now. Uh, with household energy bills set to increase by 80 percent next month, charities warn as many as one in three households will face fuel poverty this winter, leaving millions of people to choose between eating and heating their homes. Bank of England has forecast inflation will reach a 42-year high of 13.3 percent in October, threatening to push Britain into a prolonged recession. So this trust is going to have to face these economic and foreign policy challenges. How are they going to differ from yeah. Boris Johnson, who was ousted after a series of scandals? Well, the main difference with Boris Johnson is the problems are probably twice as bad. Um, it's partly the fact that we have got extremely high inflation right now in the UK. Um, I'm actually in the UK right now visiting family. Um, and people are talking a lot about the cost of living crisis. You can really feel it um, everywhere. You've also got, of course, all the hangovers of Brexit, which continue to plague the British economy and make business face doubly big challenges. But the really big one that's at the top of everyone's mind right now is the energy issue. Um, we had some news out of Russia today that essentially Vladimir Putin is cutting off Nord Stream 1, cutting off gas to Europe, continental Europe. And although the UK doesn't actually get that much of its gas from Nord Stream 1, the whole environment of rising energy prices is really putting pressure on Britain. And it's going to put pressure on Liz Trust. One of the first things she said um, is that she's going to take action to try and soften the blow of rising energy prices. But the question everyone has right now is what can she do other than pray desperately for one of those famously mild British winters with lots of rain and not much else?
And Jillian, uh, one of the one of the strategies that the G7 announced on Friday when I interviewed Janet Yellen is to try to cap Russian exports, uh, cap oil prices on Russian exports. Now, I know natural gas, not oil, is really the big deal in Europe, but it's all fungible when you come to energy. And so if you capped oil prices, and to do it by tying that to Russia's ability to get shipping insurance for the oil above an agreed-upon price limits. Uh, but how that's going to actually work practically, how are they going to regulate it, how can it work without India or, and China limiting the price on their Russian oil? Yellen told me that India is already re, you know, making uh, long-term contracts with Russia at lower prices uh, because they, it's to their advantage. I mean, it's very... But China is the outlier, right? Yeah, it's a very, very challenging issue right now. I mean, Kiev have been begging Western leaders for weeks now to get serious about trying to find a way to stop the flow of dollars and hard currency going to Russia in exchange for its oil exports. And one of the terrible, ghastly ironies of the last six months is that Moscow's had a huge surge of money going into its coffers because it's been exporting oil and because the oil price has been rising. And much of that money has been going straight into the war effort. So they're looking at ways to try and stop that other than an outright ban. Um, there is a big problem in that India and China are essentially buying oil on the cheap, it seems, at a lower price. But one of the most important weapons the West have, which has not really been discussed much recently, but is starting to be seriously embraced, is this idea of trying to stop the ships and trying to shop by acting against shipping insurance. It sounds really geeky. But it's absolutely critical because if ships can't actually carry, if tankers can't carry the oil around, that would really potentially hurt um, the Russian government. One of the big problems and another irony is one of the biggest single sources of shipping right now is Greece inside the European Union. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next in terms of Brussels and Washington and how much pressure they can bring to bear on the Greek shipping industry to stop moving the oil around. Boy, is it complicated. Jillian Ted, I can't think of anyone better to talk to today. Thank you so very much. Thanks for being with us.